WI7 News break, ISIS has made new threats in the wake of this weekend's terrorist attacks in Paris. Find out how this will affect U.S. national security and foreign policy. Also, after a year of negotiations, the University of Illinois and Stephen Salida have finally reached a settlement. Plus, panelists at the University of Illinois discuss what they believe are the most pressing issues facing the LGBTQ community. Your UI7 News Break starts right now. From the Richmond Journalism Teaching Studio at the University of Illinois campus, this is your UI7 News Break, your U of I news source. Good afternoon and welcome to UI7 News Break. I'm Ryan White. And I'm Sonites Gebregerges. Shockwaves are being felt around the world after terrorist attacks in Paris. UI7 Newsbreak's Kathleen Foley has more on what ISIS claims is coming next. Following Friday's massacre in Paris, which claimed the lives of 129 people and injured hundreds more, Belgian officials have issued an international warrant for the arrest of Salah Absalom and French President Francois Hollande address a rare joint session of Congress, promising to destroy the ISIS threat. Two days after the attacks in Paris, French warplanes dropped bombs on an ISIS command center, a training camp, and other targets in Raqqa, Syria. Belgium, London, Australia, and the G20 summit held national moments of silence, standing in solidarity with France. At the G20 summit in Turkey, President Obama said the ongoing airstrikes against the terror group have been effective, while he dismissed pressure to increase ground presence in Syria. Propaganda released by ISIS claims there will be more terror to come, this time targeting Washington. In the United States, Texas, Michigan, governor, Alabama, and uh, Illinois have decided to close the their borders to Syrian set. refugees uh, in an effort to ensure the safety the of their residents. Minnesota House Representative Keith Ellison, who is a Muslim, condemns ISIS and their practices. The goal of the terrorists is to make you turn on your neighbor, but we will never do that. We'll stand together. We'll stand strong. In Champaign, I'm Kathleen Foley for UI7 Newsbreak. More in Paris, two suspects were killed and seven others are under arrest following a police raid this morning. Presidents of the Paris suburb were awoken by gunshots and explosions. Witnesses say they could see the bullets and feel the building shake with each explosion. Fortunately, police got there just in time and were able to prevent another attack from happening. French Interior Minister Bernard Cazenavou congratulated the police involved in the raid. President Francois Hollande is asking to extend a state of emergency three more months. University of Illinois trustees voted last week on a settlement for Stephen Salida. Almost a year and a half later, the two parties have finally come to an agreement. The lawsuit began in August 2014 when the university revoked Salida's appointment as a Latin American Studies professor because of anti-Israel tweets. U of I agreed to pay Salida $600,000 plus an additional $275,000 for legal fees. Both parties say they are ready to move forward from the controversy. June's Supreme Court marriage equality ruling was considered a landmark civil rights victory. But advocates at the University of Illinois want people to know that marriage is not the only issue facing the LGBTQ community. University of Illinois LGBT Resource Center hosted the Beyond Marriage Equality panel this Thursday at the YMCA. Students and community members gathered to discuss how the media's focus on marriage equality has overshadowed other important issues in the LGBTQ community. One panelist said that in order to achieve equality, people said should avoid labeling others based on sexuality and race. Others offered advice to those struggling with gender identity issues. Small town doesn't have to mean small-minded. Champaign County locals gathered together on Monday to learn about their global community at the annual Champaign County HCE International Luncheon. Nisha Hobb has more. Well, Heavenly Father, of I and Parkland students we aren't the only ones sitting in on interesting lectures in the Champaign-Urbana area. Members of the Champaign County Home and Community Education Program get together to learn about and celebrate different countries and cultures each year. The program is put together by Marge Pro Basco. I've been the international director for our Champaign County HCE uh, for several years, and this will be my last year. But I've enjoyed every year, every country, and uh, the ladies will say they know that I enjoy it because they can tell like, how, I, how I come out with the end of everything. Speakers for this year's luncheon were Father John Flattery, who wrote a book about Lithuanian settlement in Illinois, 
as well as Carol Mitchell, who shared her experiences growing up with Lithuanian heritage, as well as her travels to her grandparents' home country. All the people I've met, all the women I've met, all of the wonderful experiences that we've had and we've shared, that's really been the joy. And that is a goal for not only the Champaign County HCE, but for the state program overall. President of the Illinois State HCE, Jane Chapman, explains her hopes for the program and why she encourages public involvement. Anyone is invited to any event like this here. You know, it's open to the public. Uh, that's what we're about. We're educating the public, the community, making people aware of what's going on in the world. That's some of our things, you know. Through le it's a learning organization. As the luncheon wraps up, guests are able to take home some of the food that's been left over. For Mitchell, the program was a way to give back to her community through sharing her unique experiences while also giving her the opportunity to connect with her heritage and her grandmother at a deeper level. Today there are immigrants all over the world suffering and striving for the same hope. From Champaign, Lee Shahab, U.S. Coming up after the break, one Illinois resident traveled to Champaign to showcase his homemade glass. Also, a new way of learning for children in Champaign. Find out how one dog is encouraging children to read. Your UI7 news break continues after this. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. So good to see you guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're spending a lot on... <laughs> Oh. Is it good? Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. But when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, bro. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Welcome back. Champaign's 33rd annual art fair featured exhibits from over 20 local artists. Among them was a glassblower who, after decades of learning and expanding his craft, built his dream job from the ground up. This past weekend, Champagne featured its 33rd annual art exhibit. Among the various artists were Matthew Urban, whom built a glass blowing company on his own. I make all kinds of things out of recycled glass. I have a small shop in Normal, Illinois that I built from the ground up about five and a half years ago. Urban says there just isn't enough time to learn all of what this form of art has to offer. The, the technique of glass blowing, I think, is something that it's a lifelong pursuit. There was a person many years ago who told me you could never in your lifetime try every glass technique that there is because there's just so many different ways to make glass. The artist says he enjoys the complexity and immediacy of glass blowing. Well, glass is an amazing material. It's, a, it's one of the few materials that you can work with, make in a day, and the next day when it comes out of the oven, it's completely done. You know. As his business began to boom, he decided to create a shop. However, in the production, he wanted to create an environment where he did not have to work to pay off huge debts. So, came time to build the shop and uh, 
It took a long time to do it. I didn't take out any loans. I built it as I got the money, but I own the entire thing outright. The local artist says being sufficient in your business will make you happier in the long run and save you plenty of costs. The way that I designed it is it's super efficient. I have an electric furnace which costs me about $17 a day to run, which is unheard of by most glass blowing standards. Though Urban has been a glass blower for nearly two decades, he says you can never master it all. Every day that I'm in the shop, I learn. No matter how mundane the task is that I'm doing, I'm always learning. Always. For UI7 News, I'm Vanetta Sims. So everything's like a small While Urban was chasing after his dreams, kids in Champaign are chasing after a tale. Kids don't always enjoy practicing how to read in front of their classmates, so instead they are reading to dogs. The Orpheum Children's Science Museum is now home to this new way of learning. As a child, it can be quite intimidating when reading a book out loud in front of your classmates. That's why a woman named Chris Eliason was inspired to create something new in order to help children's reading skills. Meets Raven, the poodle dog that's been listening to a variety of stories from kids for nearly 10 years now. One day, the Urbana's Free Library asked to come in and visit Eliason's dog club at the time. They asked her if they could bring kids along and have them read aloud to the dogs. From there, Eliason decided to bring that idea to the Orpheum Children's Science Museum. When uh, even maybe 12 year olds, 13 year olds don't know the language, this is an international community, they come in from all over and to read a, a, a simple English, English words uh, book, it's much easier to do it with, with her instead of a room full of kids who already probably give me a hard time. Every third Sunday of the month, kids could come here, bring their favorite books, and practice reading aloud to Raven. I think she just has a connection with animals. I don't know. I just, I don't know if it's helped her, but maybe. What do you think, Maddie? Did it help you read to dogs? What did you feel reading to the dog? I felt good. Eliason says with the help of Raven, she wants to encourage children to read without the fear of a school setting. But Raven isn't only supportive in that instance either. We'll go to the campus libraries uh, at finals time, ACES, Granger, and undergrad, and um, for stress relief. Parents and kids who are interested would first have to get a membership through Orpheum Children's Science Museum. But Eliason says even if non-members come in and want their kids to read to Raven, She'd be more than happy to take her right outside to do so. In Champaign, Sunites Gabrigedgis, UI7 News Break. The Anita Purvis Center teamed up with local recycling programs to help raise awareness to the importance of recycling. UI7's youth Nathaniel Stewart has more on the story. Saturday was America Recycles Day at the Anita Purvis Nature Center in Urbana. Staff and the city of Urbana's youth cycle team together in hopes to bring a better understanding of recycling to Champaign County residents. The center says the goal of the event was to bring awareness to the reuse of people's goods by giving them new life and new purpose instead of filling landfills. Well, we want children and parents to walk away with ideas and um, we're giving them lots of opportunities to create things from old t-shirts so we want them to take something home that's going to remind them um, about the event. The City of Urbana's Youth Cycle Program and the City of Champaign's Recycling Program provided the activities that filled the day like Recycling Pledge Station, the Recycling Idea Store, Arts and Crafts Activity Section, and a bunch of other souvenirs. I'm standing here in front of the Nita Purvis Nature Center where today is National America Recycles Day. Parents and their children have been coming in to learn about the best ways to recycle. Each year, they choose a different theme to focus on. This year's theme was clothing in the loop. The center asked that all participants bring coats, hats, gloves, and scarves to donate to Courage Connection, a local not-for-profit that supports women and children transitioning out of abusive homes. Um, uh, the City of Urbana has a resource guide that will show you where you can take things like that so that you don't have to throw them away. Um, there are places where um, they'll just accept that from you and reuse it again and give it a new life. In Urbana, Nathaniel Stewart, UI7 News Break. That's all for your UI7 News Break. Tune in for our final show on December 9th. Thanks for watching and have a great day.